Hey everyone. In this video, we're going to continue looking at the method of substitution when working with indefinite integrals. And mainly what I want to take a look at in this example is how the method of substitution, there's no one correct way to do this. Oftentimes there are multiple different substitutions we can use that will lead us to the correct answer. So my example here, I have the integral of x times the square root of 4 plus x times dx. And I want to show you two different substitutions we can use to help us find this integral. So the first thing right away, if we look at this, we have what's underneath our square root sign, 4 plus x. If I take the derivative of that, I will end up with just 1. But that doesn't work out too nice with the x that's out front here. So that means I am going to have to use some clever substitution to help us set this up into an expression that we do know how to find the antiderivative of. So for the first one, let's just try this out and let's say let's let u equal 4 plus x. So what's underneath our square root sign? As I said, if, I, if we take the derivative of this, the derivative of 4 is 0, the derivative of x is just 1, so we end up with just du is equal to dx. Now thinking about the substitution, I want to replace all of these x's with u's. Underneath the square root sign, the 4 plus x will be substituted with just u. The dx, we can substitute that for du, but that does leave an x out front here. So what we need to do is we're actually going to use the, our expression for u, this first equation we set up, and let's solve that for x. So if I subtract 4 from both sides, we end up with x is equal to u minus 4. So now we have three different pieces we can use for the substitution. So we end up with the integral. Now instead of x, we'll substitute in u minus 4. Underneath our square root sign, we're going to replace that with u, so the square root of u. And instead of dx, we can substitute in du. So we end up with an expression that's still a little complicated, but because we were able to rewrite this, now we can distribute the square root of u, and we should be able to find the antiderivative. So I'm going to think about u, the square root of u, as u to the 1 half. And I'm going to distribute that to both parts here. So we end up with u to the 3 halves power minus 4 times u to the 1 half. And we still have the du. So one of our properties of integrals, we can split this up over addition or subtraction. So we'll have the integral of u to the 3 halves times du minus the integral of 4 u to the 1 half du. And I could bring that 4 out front as well. So taking that constant factor and moving that outside the integral. So why don't we do that? So minus 4 times the integral of u to the 1 half du. So now we're able to find the antiderivative of each of these individually. So when we find the antiderivative, we increase the exponent by 1. So for that first one, we have u to the 5 halves. And then to make sure that would simplify properly, we're going to put a 2 fifths out front. And then we have minus 4. And then increasing the exponent by 1, that's going to be u to the 3 halves. And then to make sure that one simplifies properly, we'll have a 2 thirds. And because it's an indefinite integral, we need to include the constant plus c. And now to finish up, just like we saw in previous examples, we need to resubstitute, replace u with what we started with here. So that's going to be 2 fifths. And substituting in for u, we'll do 4 plus x to the 5 halves. And then minus, I'm going to simplify these constants here a little bit. So 4 times 2 thirds is going to be minus 8 thirds times 4 plus x to the 3 halves, and we have the plus c. 
So that's the first substitution we tried, just replacing what's underneath our square root sign. And we had to do a little bit of clever substitution to also replace the x, but we were able to find this integral. Now, let's try out this same example, but let's use a different substitution to see how that plays out. So same example, our first one, we let u be four plus x. So for this one, why don't we let u be the entire square root of four plus x. So we're gonna replace this entire piece of our expression with just the variable u. Now, as we've seen, we, we do wanna take the derivative of this to get du, but if I take the derivative of this square root the way it is right now, I'm gonna end up with something a little messy. This is to the one half power. So if we take the derivative, we end up with the negative one half power. So this radical would move down into the denominator of a fraction, and that's not gonna work out too nice with what we wanna do for our substitution. So instead, I wanna work with this expression a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square both sides. So u squared is equal to four plus x. And now why don't we isolate the x? So subtracting four from both sides, x is gonna be equal to u squared minus four. Now this expression, this equation, is much easier to find the derivative of, since we don't have the square root in there anymore. So if we take the derivative, we have dx. So that's nice because we do wanna end up substituting in for dx in our original expression. And then the derivative of u squared is two u, and we do have to include the du as well. All right, so now taking a look at everything we set up here, u is equal to the square root of four plus x, so that will replace everything here, this entire piece. We have something that we can substitute in for dx, and then the last one, the x that we have out front, we have something here that we can also substitute in for that. So doing all that substitution, let's see what we end up with. So instead of x, we're gonna substitute in u squared minus four. Instead of this entire radical, we'll substitute in u. And then our last one, dx, we're gonna, we're gonna substitute in two u times du. So let's simplify and rewrite a little bit. So we have u squared minus four in parentheses, u times u, so two u squared times du. And then let's distribute the two u squared. So we have the integral, and that's gonna be two u to the fourth minus eight u squared, and we still have the du. So just like we saw in our first method of substitution for this example, we're able to get rid of the radical, we're able to rewrite the expression, and now I have two different terms that I do know how to find the antiderivative of. So we know that we can split this up and each one of these would get its own integral, but I'm not gonna write that down, I'm just gonna find each of these antiderivatives. So we're gonna have the two that's still out front, the exponent increases by one, so that's gonna be u to the fifth, and we need to include a one-fifth to make sure that would simplify properly. And then minus eight, and increasing the exponent by one, that's gonna be u cubed, and we'll include the one-third, and it's an indefinite integral, so we have our constant plus c. So now I'm gonna move over here, and we'll redo our substitution. So we're gonna have two fifths and then replacing u with what we started with. So that's gonna be the square root of four plus x to the fifth and then minus eight thirds, the square root of four plus x and to the third power and we still have our constant plus c. And since the square root is the same as the one half power we can simplify these exponents. So that's gonna be two fifths, 
four plus x, and then multiplying the one half and the five, we have the five halves power, and minus eight thirds, and doing the same with our second term, four plus x to the three halves power plus the constant c, which is what we had in our first method as well. So two different methods, we end up with the, th with the same answer, just goes to show that there's not one way, not one correct method to use for your substitution. Oftentimes, you just need to take a look at what you're starting with and try something out. If you try something out and it doesn't work, it may give you an idea of what to try out the next time. The other thing to keep in mind as well is as after you pick out what you're gonna use for your substitution, you can work with that equation to help you substitute in for other pieces in your original integral as well. So hopefully this example helps you out, gives you a couple ideas that you can use when you try these problems out on your own.